you need some new helmets now. Well, yeah. yeah the, uh, <laughs> the, the, I'll tell you, your firefighters did an excellent job the other night at that high-rise fire. Yeah. Uh, they met some extreme uh, conditions in that uh, on the seventh floor. Fire came in. We didn't know what floor it was on. It was reported we had smoke on the fifth, the sixth floor, and the seventh floor. As they, they took the stairs and as they made their way up, they checked the fifth floor and it had uh, moderate smoke but not a lot of heat. Checked the sixth floor, it had a little bit more heat, and then they checked the seventh floor and there was extreme heat up there. We believe uh, it started in a, in a small, um, they call it a studio apartment. What they've done is they've taken a two-bedroom apartment and they basically cut it in half and they've mm -hmm. taken one bedroom and made it like an efficiency apartment. They put a little cooking unit in, a little sink, and a little refrigerator, and basically it has a bed in it. In a, in a small bathroom, not even a, <coughs> in a tub, just a shower. And uh, they, they have, they call them uh, B units, so they have like seven, uh, 719 and then 719B. If it's a B, we know it's a studio. So the fire started in there, it was a cooking fire, started on the stove top. Typical fire, uh, you can see the electric element had burned right through the aluminum pan, uh, started the apartment on fire. What we believe is the apartment burned uh, and then the windows broke out, which allowed it to get oxygen and push that fire right into the hallway. It was really strange because the amount of burn in the apartment didn't match the amount of fire, I'll, I'll make it quick, in the, in the hallway. What we think happened was the hallway flashed over it. And that means products of combustion built up, as the heat built up, all of a sudden all those products took off and, and ignited at the same time. Flash over scale firefighters were just very, very lucky. I had one of my most aggressive crews up there fighting this fire, and they got pushed back. We had some problems. The fire pump wasn't working at the time. It is working now. And uh, the fire department connection, where we actually hooked in and feed water into the building, disconnected and broke. We train on these contingencies all the time. They immediately knew what was wrong. They backfed the system. They pulled hoses in and backfed the standpipe system, which got water to the firefighters up on the seventh floor, and they were able to then progress down the hallway. But, but they came and we sat down and, and talked about it a little bit. And these are, these are probably one of my most aggressive teams, and they were extremely frightened for a very short time because of the heat conditions that they had encountered up there, and they had limited water to fight it. Plus, they, still, they, they thought they still had rescues uh, in the apartments. We were taking people off the balconies on our, with our aerial tower. That, that, that floor, the, the heat, the, the smoke, thick, thick black smoke had banked down to about this far off the floor. And the carpet, carpet nowadays is made, it won't burn. It'll, it, even if you hold a torch to it, it'll basically just melt right there. This whole floor, uh, a whole wing, the, the carpet would just crystallize. So that tells me there was a, an immediate intense heat in that whole area, pro probably a flashover. And, you know, maybe maybe God was looking out for us because the, the slowdown and getting water caused my crew to back up. Maybe kept them out of the environment when wow. they flashed and saved their life. We don't yeah. know. Yeah. But you try to analyze things in a more positive way. But mm -hmm. but they did an excellent job in getting in and, and containing that fire to that one area. So 400 people up there. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, and there uh, we, we had the Captain Johns was extremely helpful in, in dealing with Red Cross and getting housing for the people that were put out. Um, it, was a, it was a great team effort. We had uh, five of our mutual aid departments there. Uh, we ordered that uh, we, we call it Mavis Mutual Aid Box Alarm System. It's a very rapid way for us to order resources. We call our dispatch, they call up to the county, and right away I have three different uh, departments come. Chief, tell them about our backup ambulance, too. Star ambulance like uh, that, you, that you approved as our backup ambulance was big. I've been getting compliments on their service for a couple of months now since we implemented them. Uh, but they, they were right down on the spot. They had three ambulances at the scene. They brought, they took an ambulance uh, and put one at headquarters fire station for us and had three of them operating in the city taking run for us wow. uh, while all of this was going yeah. on. So it allowed our firefighters yeah. to, to focus on firefighting and, and uh, we knew the medical was all taken care of by our backup ambulance service. So it really worked, worked out well. Uh, we had we had a fire up in Glen Erie uh, a couple, uh, a day before. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the resident passed away uh, our ambulance showed up there also and set up medical rehab for our firefighters. When they come out, um, we want to make sure that they're rehabbed properly before we send them back in. Uh, probably about 50% of, of the uh, firefighter deaths nationally are caused by heart attacks. So we want to make sure we don't send them back into an environment when the blood pressure is too high, the pulse is racing, they're not hydrated, and, and we turn that over to 
star, which allows us to free up our paramedics to go and actually fight fires, because all of our paramedics are firefighters. Chief, um, <coughs> is this, you know, we have complaints about uh, used to be Charter House, Providence Tower. <coughs> so uh, I'm, I'm alarmed that the fire, the fire suppression system uh, was was not working. That's a management responsibility. That's correct. That's correct. We have um, over 8,000 occupants that we have to inspect an annually, and we and we just don't have the manpower to well, get Well, you know, one of the things we've talked about <coughs> is and it's not an indictment of the fire. Oh fire no, I understand. I, I was just but one of the things we have talked about is rental property inspections, and here's a case in point. And we've had complaints. Um, several complaints last year about that building. I was I was going to bring it up, um, Mr. Charette, and, and we can discuss we're it further. We're going to roll something. There, out there is case. there is something written in the code the fire marshal brought to my mm -hmm. attention that we we could require uh, uh, even though the they don't have an alarm system in this building to to alert the residents, but there's something in the code where we could we could require them now to install those uh, notification systems. Uh, and, and, and pull them, pull them to the code. So I'll talk to Mr. Shrek for a minute. We've done a lot of work in this area. Yeah. But we'd like to roll something out. Uh, if it's outside resources, then that's what it's going to have to be. Mr. Shrek. Yeah. Uh, can I just one yeah. quick variance point about that? Um, last night, well, the fire the other night. One of the things the comments that I got from the American Red Cross is that they said they've been in multiple uh, communities. We have a good working relationship with them. Because of the fire, we have on emergency management. We stayed there the whole time, and we put pressure on management to make sure these people had a place to stay. Mm -hmm. We did not leave that scene until everybody that was displaced had somewhere to lay their head. Management was hesitant to do it, but we made sure we had a city representative there in the management office with the Red Cross. They said that the spirit of cooperation with the city of South Bend, our citizens, I think, got this service. And we did the same thing on the fire suppression side. We didn't yes. leave until the the uh, contractor was there to fix the fire department connection and get that fire pump up and running. Uh, we didn't feel we were going to shut the building down and, and have Red Cross we prepared to evacuate 400 people but yeah. the whole building because we can't leave a building unsafe for its residents. Councilman Fiber, are you all done? Yeah. Uh, Councilman Moss. Yes, yeah, a question too about the fire. Is it user error? Or was it because there's these makeshift kitchens that are set up? I mean, well, I think it was a, it was. Uh, resident there. Okay, because yeah. that's also alarming to me that they kind of are just splitting them up and having these yeah. makeshift kitchens where areas that weren't built to have full kitchens. We're going to talk to Carrie and see if they actually have that inspected. If that, if yeah. The code and yeah. That was that's a concern. The fatality the day before was also easier. Uh, we had, what, oxygen tanks? Yeah, he, he was a heavy smoker and on oxygen and, oxygen and uh, kind of a hoarder. Uh, multiple. It was a log cabin that they had added on to over the years, multiple roofs. The old days, rather than trying to repair a roof, they built a new roof over it. So we had double roofs. We had huge fire and no way to get to it. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was... It's not uncommon for people to have something on the stove and forget to clear and let it burn. Yeah. How does that happen next to me? That's a, that's a point I made. Uh, yeah. Fox 2 interviewed me and I, I made that point that so many times we put something on the stove and then our attention gets drawn away I'll from somewhere leave, I'll else. I'll leave the apartment. Cooking. Maybe I should cooking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm burn up your own house. It's, it's, it's bad, but when you, you're sharing yeah. walls with somebody, yeah. you burn, right. burn them out. Right. Right. Yeah. I was going to mention the same thing that Jeremy mentioned, but I'd like to also know if they pull permits to do that work. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll follow up on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. there, there's a new manager in there. She's been in there about a month. Uh, and she was very receptive. It's a third one in quite a short time, uh, but she was very uh, receptive to uh, the, our needs, and, and I told her that the, the part, uh, fire inspector would be over there inspecting that property very quickly. Thank you, Council. This uh, the Oakland County Hazardous Waste Management Board meeting is Yes. 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 Yes.